It's the same wisdom the armed robber does. It's, it's armed robbery. Same thing the person uses to deceive people. It's the same wisdom everyone deploys at any level. So we cannot continue that way. We need to discover what his wisdom is. Now, Paul says something very, very awesome. We're talking about childish thinking. What's God's wisdom about wisdom? God's wisdom about a child. First Corinthians 13, 11. Paul says something very striking. He said, 13, 11, please. So when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. And I thought or reasoned as a child. Well, when I became a man, when I grew up, man is not, it's not about gender, it's about growth, it's about maturity. When I grew up, I put away childish things. Essentially, Paul is saying by the Holy Ghost that childish things don't exit your life if you don't put them away. That's why to define that every adult still manifests some childishness. But that cannot be sustained because at a particular age, you cannot afford to continue to be childish. In which case, nobody would trust with some responsibilities. Praise God. No matter how much you love your child, a five-year-old that wants to drive the daddy's car, daddy, let me drive. Leave it for me to drive. And he begins to struggle with the dad. Now, if they're not on the main road, just one street, one small corner there, daddy could put him on his lap, which is wrong. It's against traffic rule. But David could still risk, even inside their, in their compound, put the child on his laps, the child hosts, the child believes he's the one driving the car. The steering is going this way, the car is going that way, the child believes, hey, I'm driving that. And that is like, <laughs> look at this one. And as the car begins to go in a direction to hit the wall, that is this the steering. And the child will say, daddy, leave it. <laughs> you know? So this is the reason of a child. And you know, you find that unless we grow up, that reasoning cannot leave us. God, Paul said, I put away. That is to say, you've grown to a point that when I became a man, when I became mature, I had to tell childish things to live my life. So if you do not put away childish things, they will still be there. And as long as they are there, you cannot access deep things. You cannot access any responsibilities. Nobody would give you a responsibility to handle because you mess it up. Whether in the secular or in the spiritual, it's the same thing. But what's the message here? The question will now be, what is childish thinking? Now look at the procedure here. You find that it's, it's, it's it's a kind of descending order, the way Paul put it. But if you look at it from the down, it's actually ascending. Because it is thoughts that produce understanding. Understanding shows in what you speak. You have to think before you understand. It is your understanding that shows in what you speak. Now, speak there or spoke there has to do with the, the, the external, has to do with doing. You do speak, you do act, you do go, you do relate, you do respond. So it means every response of yours to everything and everybody is traceable to your understanding, which can be tracked when we get to know what your thoughts are. So everyone that does whatever is simply an expression of their thinking based on the understanding. The thinking is what produces the understanding. Now, if the thinking is wrong, yours sincerely, the understanding will be wrong. Is that correct? That's the way it is. And once there's faulty understanding, there can be no good speaking. So this is what you see today. Speaking, there, it could be acting. There can be no good acting. So what is the message here? The question will now be, what is a childish thought, for instance, that may remain there even in adulthood? 
What is that childish understanding that people think will go by just praying? Paul didn't pray against them. He put them away. <laughs> you know, Christians want to fast. There's this urge, there's this aggression in us to take the glory that belongs to God. We want to tell people how we fasted. Ah, yeah, yeah. How we went to the mountain and climbed Mount Everest, spiritual Mount Everest, Mount Kilimanjaro. How we said to God, answer me today like you did, Hannah. And God said, yes. No, we like, in our testimony, it's a way you want to show how much prayer you put into it. <laughs> but this one does not answer to how powerful your prayer is. It only going to, it's only going to leave you or exit your life as you put it away. So you can't pray about this. Now, what is it? it uh, Proverbs 20:11. Proverbs 20, 11 says, even a child is known by his doings. That's good, thank you. King James says, by his doings. A child is known by his deeds, whether, he does it, whether what he does is pure and right. A child is known by his doings. Now, we are looking at a childish thought or a childish understanding or a childish act, which is by way of speaking, acting, Doing, deciding, concluding, everything about that speak is an expression of understanding. It's not limited to what a child speaks. All right. So what is it? Now that we know that even a child is known by his doings, then it means what are those doings of a child that will remain as a matter of must? Even when he has grown and grown, the doings of a child will still remain if he does not put them away. This is key. And so in every interview you go for, as long as there's a manifestation of childishness, they cannot trust you. <laughs> you know, the interviewers are, they are, these are HR people. They may not, they know you're already so brilliant that they, they can't, you have to lecture them in some things that they claim to know, because you are fresh. But they also are looking out for something else about whether there's still some childishness you have not put away. Oh, yeah. Even when you have all the certificates. Now, what are the peculiarities a child has? What are the characteristics of a child? What are those things? Well, let's say, don't forget the foundation is the thoughts. Now, it, it, thoughts are formed from diverse things, from the environment. What you pick, what you are exposed to can form your thoughts. Apart from Satan suggesting thoughts to us, as we grow up, find that thoughts are formed in many ways. What you hear can form your thoughts. Friendship can determine your thoughts. Association, exposure can change your thinking. Good. But let's take it as childish thought. What is a childish thought? Can you give me a childish thought? So that we can escalate it to understand and speaking or doing or acting. Yeah. Wants to. Thank you. A child is possessive. I like that point. The Lord bless you. Well, that's the key. That, that's actually the key thing that you know a child for. A child wants to take over everything. A child believes he owns that which is attractive to him. A child wants all the attention. I'm trying to let you see how we can now escalate it or cascade it to the, into, to the higher levels. Thinking, understanding, then doing, which can be speaking, acting, relating, etc., etc. Now, a child wants everything. Attention, all the food, all the sweeties, all the toys. All the, of course, of course, he owns whatever you, think, you call your own. So when a child likes a toy that a fellow child is playing with, he may slap that child bah! to take it. If that one gives him back a heavier blow, ah, it's my, oh, he beat me. 
He beat me. I was saying, you beat me first. No. It is my own. He wants that thing. Now, he doesn't care how that one got to have it. He doesn't, he, he is not thinking about this being covetousness or being another way of stealing. He does not know what stealing is all about. He likes it. It has to be his own. In fact, it is you that stole it from him. Now, if that child grows like that and does not put away that childish thought, guess what? He's now born again. He's now an adult. You know what? He will still be extra possessive. He will be domineering. He will be attention-seeking till he gets to 70 or 80. Don't forget, childish things don't exist if you don't put them away. And as long as they remain, there are things you will not be able to enjoy. No matter how much wonderful you are. Now, let's now look at this child who is now in marriage, in a marital relationship. <laughs> this child has become a man, now heading his wife, yet having failed to put away childish things. What's going to happen? It wouldn't matter to him how tired the wife is just coming from work. Is my food on the table? Don't see how stupid you are. Doesn't Bible tell you that husband is the head of the wife? Where is my food? Don't blame the man. He has grown. The wife is saying, but you should understand. I'm just coming from work. I just was sick for days. I'm calling your baby. And I had to go to work because they wouldn't sack me. And I'm just coming back. Excuse me, that's maybe my food. Where is my food? Or you're out of this house. Now, the man is not demonic. He has not just put away childish things. He must have his way. Because a child must have his way. That's why, no matter how powerful the conference is, if a child is there, he cries when he wants to cry. Have you ever observed that? Now, it, it is you that will feel embarrassed. A child is never embarrassed. There's no embarrassment in the dictionary. He does not watch him by embarrassment. Embarrassed what? To him, somebody has committed an offense and he has to cry. That's his weapon. <laughs> Everybody was hey, turns next with tongue. The mother will now carry the child, cover the mouth. <laughs> and now he's crying the more. That's a child. But that child will carry on with that thought. That understanding, of course, that crying is a way of speaking. He continues like that into adulthood. So when he now gets born again, that does not change his childish tendencies. Ah. That's why the Bible, the Word of God is there to help us, to help change our thinking. This may help somebody here looking for a job or business or contracts. There is some form of childishness, some selfish, some self-centeredness that will still manifest if you have not put them away. <laughs> we are still on that point. The child wants to possess, to always collect, to always receive. The child does not give, except he has grown to a point where he, he likes to give. Or even when he gives, he does not know what giving means. So, we are trying to like into something. We are, we are, it's going to dovetail into a particular thing. And you find that, yeah, we have a lot to do with ourselves as Christians. And the, 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 the reasons we you know, complain, things are not working, could be this very secret. We'll come back to that major point. Another point about a child. We, even a child is known by his doings, by his deeds or actions, yes? A child is non challenged. A child does not know where danger is. He's rushing to the main road. The mom runs, everybody runs after him. Because he's not, now he's in his Instagram walk. Now, that person, when he's now an adult, he still does not know that there are, there's a caution, there's some caution you must entertain, you must exercise. I've come to that point. You said something? A child has no secret. Mommy, ah, 
My mommy will go to London tomorrow. Hey. The mommy is trying to cover it from anybody. But the child has blown it open. Mommy said, I should tell you she's not inside. She's in the room there. She said, I should tell you that she's not around. Now, the child cannot keep that secret. As much of the mom. But let's now look at something very vital that has to do with our Christian race. That's the word love. Love. The Bible says God is love. First John 4, 7 and 8. Be loved. Let's love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. He that does not love does not know God. For God is love. First John 4, 7 and 8. If that is the case, 1 Corinthians 13, Galatians 5, 6, whichever you can do first is okay. 1 John 4, 7 is not clear. Thank you for that. Galatians 5, 6, 1 Corinthians 13. Thank you. The last part says, but faith which worketh by love. I'm trying to show you something. Why what Paul said is key. Why our work of faith may not have been so beneficial? Because love is lacking. Why is love lacking? Because we are still childish. Yeah. Now, move to 1 Corinthians 13. What is love? Or what, what are the things that make love what it is? Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels... And of angels, but I have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. Move on, please. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. Wow. This is profound. And though I bestow all my goods, I'm a cheerful giver. And I feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but I have not love, it profits me nothing. Ha. Love, now, look at love. Love suffers so long. Anyone a child demonstrates there, tell me, good. Does a child suffer for long? No. Once a child is, is hungry, he cries. Is that right? It can, there's no long suffering in the child's dictionary. That's why the parents will have to do what they have to do to get food ready at the right time. Right from childhood, from being a baby, a child has to cry for food, has to eat. Are we together? So a child cannot suffer for long. It, no. Two, do you know a child is not kind? No kind child anywhere. Why? To be kind takes a lot of maturity. You cannot be self-centered and still be kind. A child is not grown to a point he can be kind. <laughs> a a two-year-old or a one-and-a-half-year-old child, there's a baby... Four days old, baby. Uh, on the naming day, the naming the baby, while the mother is looking for who to give food to, to entertain, this one, one and a half years old child goes there, sees the baby's eyes moving. <laughs> he puts his finger inside it. Are you getting me? The, he was wondering how the eyes are moving. Nobody around. Put his finger there. He's experimenting with the eyes of the baby. Or everybody's carrying the baby. Says, I, am, I want to carry my baby. It's my baby. When you're not there, he drags the baby, baby falls back from the bed. The mother is beating her. Why? He does it. He, 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 she can't be kind. I'm trying to show you how the absence of these things, being I mean, for the fact that 
for the fact that these things have not been put, the childish thoughts have not been put away, this person cannot grow to still be kind because a child is not kind. He can't be kind. He doesn't have the power to be kind. Three, love does not envy. Ah, the child carries the biggest envy ever. And even though envy is another thing that you have to be mature to practice. But if you know what envy means by definition, find that a child It's my shoe. Now, it's not his shoes, but he wants the shoes. Love does not parade itself. Ah, a child parades himself. Anytime a child has a new wear, he wants to wear it. He must put it on. And you know, how do children know that they have something new to wear? They're excited. On the birthday, that new dress, my dress, come and see my new shoe. One of my sons, when he was a baby, would say, uh, Kima, he called me, daddy buys zoo for me. Uh, he called shoe, zoo. Kima, he called me. Now, what's Kima? Christmas. Kima, he called me. He would just be singing. He had sung that song for some time before he realized, okay, the boy was talking to me. Kima, he called me. He called me. He called me. Kima, he called me. Daddy buys zoo for me. Zoo. Zoo, how can I buy zoo? Okay, it must be shoe he's talking about. Now, the moment the shoes were bought, he must parade the shoes. Ah, you can't stop that one. Love does not parade itself, but the child actually parades himself. So when you grow up, even as a Christian, you have grown, you are now born again. If you have not put away that childish tendency of finding yourself, you will still want to show when you have something fresh. Oh, yes. You'll be showy and, you know, you know you'll be very loud because something new has just taken place. That's something you cannot demonstrate what you know. Is if you have the skill, but you are going to have the motivation to just show yourself because there's, it's a childish tendency. Love is not puffed up. Every, every holiday, I go to America with my mommy. Do you go to America to you? You don't go. Where do you go? Nowhere. Ah! Justina, he does not go anywhere during holiday. Me, I go every year to America. Oh. A child is puffed up. I'm talking of five-year-old. These ones are already big, but they are still children. I'm trying to show you how not putting away childish thinking, understanding, or acting can really be an issue. Because if you don't put them away, they will never go. And these things are key in all our relationships. Love does not behave rudely. Oh, every child is rude. Not because he wants to, but he doesn't know what it means to be, de to, to be decent. The other day I was in teacher's college. I had a Pakistani teacher. He said, he, the, the teacher, he was bald-headed. He had alopecia areata, baldness. And it was a serious one. No, I mean, it looked like Channel 10, you know. It was just glittering. The teacher said, while he was talking with his friend at home, the child just came close and began to look at his head and his friend's head. The dad had a lot of hair on his head, but the friend didn't have so much. Just on the sidelines, the main bowl was like that, nothing. But the sidelines had so much air. So the child looked and looked and looked. He said, child is not rude. It's not true. Every child is rude. But love is not rude. After some time, he came closer to see why 
his own dad had hair, but his friend didn't have. What was the problem? You know, a child's thought. His understanding was low. After he couldn't handle it, he went and touched him. You know, an African child will cry on that because the mother will give him a knock, bang, if not four knocks, at least, at least two. But this, he said he allowed the child. He felt the express way on the man's head. Now touched his own dad's own, so much air. He, he didn't understand. He did not understand. He could not. Why? His thoughts were not mature. Later, and now the friend already got the message. Of course, they, and the Pakistanis are very, very enlightened. They say, you want to know why I don't have air? I was still wondering, why don't you have, or why does my friend, is, is, is having enough air, so much air a problem? Is not having it a problem? This was, was the thought that Jack could handle. A childish thought is a childish thought. That's how he forms his understanding. That's what's showing his expression. Eventually, he began to tell him why, why, why he had so much air before, till everything began to fall off, one after the other. <laughs> Trying to safeguard all the air till nothing remained. And of course, the child learned a lesson. Now, what am I saying? A child behaves rudely. Not deliberately, though, but that's because it's a child. So, if you don't put away that childish thing, it will remain. You will still be rude, you will still be discourteous. And these things will work against you in all relationships. Oh. Love does not seek its own. Of course, we, that, we began with that one. A child seeks his own. So if any Christian does not grow to a point where he puts away childish things, the child, the, this Christian will still seek his own. When he does not have it, everybody will suffer. The church must be wrong. If he doesn't have this thing, the church has not, the church not help supporting me. And nobody's helping me. Everybody's just wicked. These people are just wicked. They are not doing well. Why are they doing this to me? And all that. He complains. Why? Because he's only seeking his own. Yeah. So he's quick to be offended. And he may switch off from the place of destiny. I will blame Satan later. I'm trying to show you how delicate this is. Love is not provoked. Oh, excuse me. Two children are playing now. The next minute is a fight. Have you observed that? The next minute is a fight. <laughs> Following minute, they have settled. But they are really easily provoked. So if we don't put away that childish thing, we will find that we are also easily provoked because we've not put away that childishness. Next one. Love does not think evil. Does a child think evil? The answer is yes. Because a child cannot love. Did I, what did I say? A child can't love. He has no capacity to love. No, no, he can't love. How can he love? Love is selfless, but the child is selfish. A child cannot love. There's no love in a child's books. So a spiritual child will be egocentric. The Bible says, woe to you, O nation, whose leader is a child. Oh, why do you think the Bible woes the person or the nation? Woe to the nation whose leader is a child. Meaning what? The leader, why do people embezzle phones? They are childish. Are you not bothered when you hear so much money? Somebody has his own personal account. Billions. Ha! I've, that's primitiveness, which is characteristic of a child. A child is primitive. A child is possessive. A child is 
self-centered. A child is easily provoked. A child wants everything for himself. So when a governor who has not put away childish things gets there, he would not even see what's wrong, what he's doing. To him, is an art. Embezzlement is a science. Stealing is, a, is an anatomy. Everything wrong is, is, is an art. He's, he's enjoying it. Why? He has this childish tendency, which he has not put away. Love does not just iniquity. When a child finds it, good for you. Mm, mm, mm. It is good for you. Mm. It's just iniquity. He's saying it is good for him because he didn't give him food to share. He didn't share food with him. So it's good for him that he has fallen down. It's good for you. Yes. Now, now God don't catch you. Did you hear? Do you hear people say that once? Uh, at times? God don't catch him. Now, it is because of the childishness in that person. A grown up person will never rejoice over the person's fall. But when you are quick to say, uh huh, and I got to catch him, it shows that childishness you have not put away. <laughs> now, love rejoices in the truth. The child doesn't know what is called truth. No, 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 no. There's nothing about truth about the child. It does not have anything to do with the truth. He just knows what he wants to know. That's what he likes to do. So what is the link today? The link is clear. We have to grow up. If we don't grow up, we will manifest the exact opposite. Okay, let's finish up. Love bears all things. A child cannot bear anything. It can't bear hunger for too long. In fact, if hunger persists, God forbid poverty in a family, if hunger persists, it can damage the child's brain. So the child can't bear it. So you see some parents, I've listened to parents I've, I've old, parents have told me they've wept on my counseling table. Why? They've had to do things they didn't like to do just to sustain the children. Oh, that's painful. You can see, no parent wants to watch his child suffer hunger for too long because the child can't be it. That's the, that's the main reason. The child will embarrass the parent. That's the thing. The child is playing now, playing, but after you've seen all the sugar in his body. <laughs> so, no reason. Ah, what is it? Ah. He's hungry. The blood sugar level has fallen. He has to eat, and he's by crying. Now, the, the mother has no answer. That's a problem. The child cannot be anything. Love bears all things. So, a spiritual child that has refused to grow cannot be anything. The Bible says a good soldier endures hardship. But today's Christian can't endure anything because of the wrong gospel being preached. Look, 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 look at the challenge. So somebody said, no, I can't endure any, 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 any trouble. I don't want any ridicule. I want miracle. That's childish talk. Because there's ridicule inside faith. If you don't want to be ridiculed, you can't walk by faith. The one with the issue of blood, wasn't she ridiculed? She defied the ridicule to get a miracle. But ridicule is there inside faith. Hebrews 12 says, because of the, you know, the joy set before Jesus, it defied the shame. So there is shame inside faith. When people can't handle shame, they can never walk by faith. They can't. That's the challenge with today's body of Christ. No deep sound teaching anymore. So I don't want, I, I, don't, I hate shame. No one likes shame, but shame is part of the package called faith. If you don't want shame, then you don't want faith. If you don't want faith, all things will be by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. There is something to endure. There is something that, can, that will bring shame to you while you are waiting on the Lord. Now, when she told himself, I mean, sorry, herself, rather, she told herself, if I can just move close 
and touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Twelve years of this overflow of blood. You know how blood smells, especially when it has stayed for some time in your body. Twelve years, non-stop. She was smelling everywhere she went to. And she was going to be in the midst of a big crowd to try to get so close, going, piercing through the crowd to the point she could touch, not to touch Jesus, but touch the hem, not even the garment, but the hem of the garment of Jesus. Look at three levels. The hem of the garment of Jesus. She was not going to touch Jesus at all because that was impossible. The garment, she couldn't touch, but the hem, just a touch, not to grab the garment. She will have to go through the crowd of people, defying the shame. There's no big power of God in demonstration without some shame. So what do you see today? Even adults, even pastors, they say, no, I don't want shame. I don't want rejection. No, I can't handle it. I, I, I don't know how to ask for help. Then you are against scripture that says, ask, it shall be given. Are you getting me? If you cannot endure shame, you say, that's why I can't ask. It means we are too big to fulfill scripture. You stay long in that challenge. So a man, man has not put a childish tendencies, childish thoughts, will not be able to ask for help. She, he would rather die inside that, that, that trouble. Say, no, no, no. I don't want anyone to reject me. Once they say they don't have, I'll feel ashamed. That is a proud person who is still longer in his trouble. Because there is provision for asking. And when I've told God, he does not say, ask God, it shall be given. He says, ask. It is us putting God there. So you can ask God, you can also ask man. The other day, my wife and I went somewhere. A, a brother helped us drive our car. And we didn't know, we were new in Lagos then. So he was so helpful and so, so wonderful. So he took us to a place we had not been to. And of course, we had to follow our leader. It was not only leading, it was driving. So we were compelled to believe him whichever way he headed. And our father, we, were, we had missed our way. And all he did was stretch his neck. No indicators as we have now in Lagos. After doing that for about 10 minutes, I said, excuse me, brother, it is you we are following. If you also don't know, why do you ask? And he said, but I know the way. If you know the way, you, can, you will not be stretching your neck 10 minutes now. He refused to ask anybody. I said, brother, I don't even know what to ask. You know the area, but you have missed your way. He said, but I know the way. I said, then take us there. We've, been, we've parked there for 10 minutes. You are just stretching your neck. I said, if you want to steal. Now, he was too proud to ask. There's so much power in asking. Even when the person you've asked cannot assist you, it does not and should not reduce you. I'm trying to show you why Christians suffer unnecessarily. Oh, after asking, and you are not given, but when that person asked, he gave him a child who reason like that. Yeah, that's a childish way of reasoning. Childish thoughts will always show when people are just primitive in their thinking. Well, only when it's my turn, I will not get it. Only a child that is possessive and self-centered will think like that. So a child reads meanings to everything. Now, love believes all things. Mm. Does the child believe all things? Do you agree with her? Mm? If a child asks, a five year old asks, Daddy, I want you to buy that toy cash. Yeah, I don't have the cash. No. No. Who choose Daddy? But the car for daddy. He does not believe you. <laughs> so he says yes and he no. In fact, when he says child believes, not because he knows what believing means. It's just that he does not know how to know whether it is a lie you have told him or not. For instance, 
You tell your son, see your daddy. See, every day, he sees the man, see your daddy. All he hears is, see your daddy, and he sees the man. So he's learning by association. By associating, see your daddy with the man he sees every day. Not that he has the capacity to believe that that's the dad. Are we together? He didn't know when he was born. He does not know how to know, to identify his own dad. It's only what the mom tells him. And not that he believes, but it is that he has no ability to probe what you have, you have to, been telling him. I, are we together? So, if you, tell, if you say he believes, that will not be totally correct. He's only conditioned to, to believe. You are wiring him every see your daddy. See your daddy. Go and greet daddy. He goes, yes, daddy, and see the same man. This haggard looking man, my daddy. Okay, daddy. No evidence that you are the dad. So a child may believe, not because he knows what it means to believe or doubt, but then actually a child has no capacity to believe anything. Because it is the way you reason everything should be. Next one. A child, love hopes all things. If you tell your five-year-old things will be better, you're not talking to him. Are, you, are, you, are we together? You're not communicating. This will be better. My own brother I brought to stay with me. When I had no job, I was, you know, I, I wanted to, I was in school doing my doctoral program. And um, I just came home and I saw this, my brother, our last born. It was Joseph. I said, come. Come and stay with me in this store. I was living in a store. Come stay with me. Whatever I see, we will eat. So every day, you just, brother, what are we going to eat today? <laughs> now, he wasn't a boy. He wasn't a child. He had grown. <laughs> are you, <laughs> praise the Lord. At least at this time, he was about 20 years old. About 18, yes. So I was a man already. Brother, what are we eating today? If I told him, well, um, we believe God, you have to pray, he will just leave me. He will not sweep the floor. He was protesting. And one day he said, I, I cannot continue to believe God like this. <laughs> now, now I was an 18 year old. I cannot be believing God every day. Before we eat, we have to believe God. Before we eat, we have to pray. We we'll pray, pray as if yeah, I, I can discontinue. Now, that was not a child, but you could see that he was a spiritual child. So a child does not hope anything. He has nothing to tell. If you tell him, all oh, we better, we better. What, it is only when it is good now I know. A child only believes in the now. It has to be now. He does not hope anything. Love endures all things. Of course, you know, a child endures nothing. What are we trying to bring out today? What Paul said is key. When I was a child, I thought as a child. I understood as a child and I acted or I did, I spoke spoke as a child. So when I grew up, ha -ha, I threw away childish thinking. I threw away childish understanding. I threw away childish acting, childish doing, childish speaking. Meaning what? Since love is all you have seen on the screen, and a child cannot love. It's not so grown to love any person. For, because it does not know what love means. And we are to walk in love. Faith worked by love. Galatians 5, 6. Something is now the key thing here. It's clear. If we must really walk with God and access all that is ours, we must walk by love or walk in love. It was the life Jesus himself lived, 1 John 2, 6. The same kind of life of love he lived, we are meant to live, if you claim to be in him. Since a child cannot love, 
a child cannot endure anything, a child cannot love, I mean, cannot bear anything, does not hope anything, a child seeks his own, a child is going to assert himself, a child is always overbearing. Anyone that has become born again, but has not grown to the point he or she puts away childish things, will manifest all these things. And when this is manifest, that despite your years in Christ, you still have not put away childish things, what's going to happen? You are going to be rubbishing all your relationships. Yeah. You are going to be manifesting the childish acts that will keep people far from you. Yeah. Once they notice that you are always going to be so sharp, you want to outwit them, they cut you off. Because a child wants to outwit the owner of the toy. A child wants to take over what does not belong to him. A child is self-seeking. A child is only thinking about himself. A child does not bear with anybody. He can't endure anything. So, when a spiritually young person or somebody is spiritually childish by way of, I mean, I've spent years in Christ, but he has not put away, don't forget, the emphasis on putting away <laughs> childish things. Childish things will never live your life. From this scripture, it's clear no childishness exceeds the life of an adult unless and until that adult puts them away. This is profound. So you see them on a daily basis. You wonder, this person has grown or ought to have grown. This is a teacher of the world. This woman, this man, ah, this brother. Ah. But the moment it comes to this thing, because this person thinks prayer will put Charlesons away. No, it's not by praying. It's by, put, it's by putting them away. How do you put Charlesons away? By growing to say, I'm above that. Hello, brother. Praise the Lord. Uh, please, I'm, I want to go to Susan Street. Would you please direct me? Huh. That's a mature person. But somebody, if I, if I go now, he will say, I, I'm a lodo. But you don't know. Since you don't know, you are still Olodo. So why don't you just ask? Because you don't know. But a childish man will not ask. I had a friend many years ago, a wonderful man, very, very good man. We were not so close, but at least we were friends. You know. We were neighbors in the community. This night he came and said, Pastor Muywa, I want to ask you for help. For help. Please don't reject me. I hate rejection. I hate rejection. He had not mentioned the help he needed, whether I could do or not. He said, I hate, I hate rejection. Don't reject me. Don't, I hate rejection. I said, hey, I don't even know what you want to ask me. What if I can't do it? He said, I have to let you know. I don't, I don't like rejection. That was a childish man. Already, I could see how toxic he was. Because a child hates rejection. A child hates to be told you can't give it to him. A child hates to be told it doesn't belong to him. I told you that the other day I was at the mall and a man came with a four-year-old, his own son. <laughs> and I was about to pay for the few things I had gone to buy. Then I just saw that the dad and the son were pulling each other. The dad was, still, the dad was just doing some window shopping. Maybe, maybe life was so tough on him, he came around to just see something. But the child had a different objective. When the child got to a point where he liked something. The dad was still pulling him in that gentry. Suddenly he found that the child was... Ah. Dad looked back. No. He put the dad back. Ah. What's the problem? So I began to... I love to observe things. I started watching. I said, ah, the man's in trouble. He has to buy this thing for this boy. The child said, the man said, my friend, move. I said, sir. You made a big mistake. You don't bring a child to this place and not buy something he likes. You are the one causing the trouble. I said, sir, if you don't have the money, just beg the boy and leave. 
He said, because this fight will not stop. You caused it because you brought him here. The man began to laugh. Because he didn't have the money. The boss, he said, Daddy, buy it. No, a child wants the entire mall. You must pay for it. Now, because it does not bear anything. He does not want to know whether you have it or not. It is that daddy, his daddy has all the money in this world. I don't know if you are getting my point. He believes you have all the cash. So just carry it and go. If at a point, when the boy broke this from the dad, just went and carried that, that toy. <laughs> I said, Mama, you don't. If I had him, I would have paid for that boy that day. He just carried it. So, ah, the dad was messed up. At the point, he said, if you don't leave it, I'll beat yourself. Don't beat him. He said, so I don't kill his spirit. He's exhibiting a child, being a child. But Bible says, even a child is known by his doings. So a spiritual child who ought to have grown is also known by his being greedy, by his being self-centered, by his being, you know, by his wanting to outwit everyone, even in business. Everything is to quickly outwit. It's a childish tendency. We must put it away that it may not put us off in all relationships. This is key. I'll have to build on this, maybe on Sunday or next Wednesday. It's a profound angle that we must develop. This is what happens. This, they call it EQ out there, emotional intelligence. I have, haven't got all the certificates. You have got all the results, all the two one and what have you. They want to look at how you can be a team player. Can this person endure some moment if the salary is delayed? Can he, can, can he endure it? Because a child will cry once his food is not showing up. Will this one call for a strike if salary is delayed? This is key. Will this one down tools if we say, for now, be here with us? Because a child cannot be anything. So when we grow, we have to grow to the point we put away childish things. So that those things will not put us away from other people. When you put child things away, then you are, mat- you are showing maturity. You can easily let go. You can forgive easily. Why, can't, why are people suing for divorce or filing for divorce? Because of the childishness in both parties. Yeah, a child is aggressive. Any small thing, this is friend though. They, they've been friends for, for a long time. You just hear, Wah! he slaps his friend. Ah! No, it's just, yeah, yeah. The two are crying. You don't know it's right or wrong. <laughs> That's how a child behaves. So a spiritual, a child of God that has not grown to the point of putting away childish things would always be edgy. Edgy is always touchy. Is always looking for his own. Is always crafty. Because he has not put away those childish thoughts. Don't forget, the thoughts will produce the understanding. Understanding will produce the acting or the action or the speaking. Beloved, this is something you need to develop on your own when you get home. This is God's wisdom. Let's put away childish things. You cannot put them away by praying or fasting. It's by legitimately working on your growth. That you grow in the word, you accept God's word. So as you take in God's word, the entrance of his word gives light. As you take in God's word, it helps you handle every childish thought that you can now put away. When the thought comes, nobody loves me in this church. That's a childish thought. Because love begins when you start it. Oh, yeah. When you sow the seed of love, it grows. You reap it. Anywhere you are, if no love is being shown, you start it. That's maturity. But people are anyone looking for love. I'm looking for love. I'm, no, you can't look for love because you, that, Romans 5.5 5 says, This kind of love is shared abroad in our hearts by His Spirit. This love of God is inside us. It is there by the Holy Ghost. It's just to express it. 
We are talking about laying down your life for your brother. We are members of one body, agape. Unconditional love, agape. That's it. Love. A child cannot love because he wants his own only. But when we grow up, we put away that childish thinking, that childish possessiveness, that childish understanding, then we can now have access to the blessings meant for us in other people's custody. You can show people courtesy even when you are so infuriated. Check some Christians. Once they are upset by anyone or anything, they transfer it to everybody. And by so doing, shut the door of favor against themselves. You are meant to be so grown that you are upset here and you set up another friendship there. You can easily switch. It's a switch. It takes growth. But so, not many can do that. Once they're upset here, they carry the upset everywhere they go to. And they displace that aggression everywhere. And by so doing, they rubbish relationships which are meant to bless them. 